everybody. This is Dana with Coach Dana Inspires.com. And we are so happy you're here today. We have got a fantastic interview. And our interviewee today is Don King. And he is good. Ha, huh, I mean, this is very timely information going into 2022. We're going to be talking about soft skills. Are they really soft skills? Hmm, I think not. USA uh, News, US News and World Report said that these are not soft skills. These are essential skills. We need to know how to work the camera, work uh, our meetings that are virtual. We need to learn how to connect. Don King is here and he's going to help us out with that. Welcome, Don. How are you? And thank you, Dana. I appreciate the opportunity to be on with you and your listeners. I'm I am doing fine. My uh, one of my gigs is teaching college, and we wrapped up a semester, so yeah, I'm enjoying a little downtime. Yeah. yeah, well, yeah, we all like a little downtime. You speak to people. You, you're, you've got colleagues. You have your clients. You're out there talking to business people all the time. What What are they saying these days? Are they Are they pessimistic? They're going into the new year. Are they optimistic. What What do you, What do you hear out there? I, I relate to what I hear from other people in an odd sort of way, Dana. I, I think, as you know, I have a uh, severely disabled daughter, and uh, she has taught us to make your plans, but hold them lightly, because they're going to change. Yes. And when people ask us, how do we handle that stress of not knowing? Uh, the reality is nobody ever knows what's going to happen with their kids. We just live with the illusion of predictability, and we have literally been disillusioned. I think a lot of business people have been disillusioned. The idea that we had predictability in the first place. So what I'm hearing from people is not so much optimism or pessimism, but adaptability. Ah. You know, we, we make our plans, but we're also ready to pivot at a moment's notice. And yeah. I think that's becoming the new normal. As much as I kind of hate to get into that kind of buzzword, I think it's true. It is the new normal. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was talking to uh, one of my interviewees several uh, months ago. He said, in all honesty, when have you ever made plans for a whole year? And they all worked out exactly as you planned. Never. So exactly. this is just, you know, that on steroids a little bit. So I think, yeah, adaptability. I love that word because it really fits. It fits the life we're in right now. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. And I think so. So I, I have written that down and I'm, I'm going to post that someplace so I can see it, like be adaptable. Don't be so hard on yourself, especially because I think a lot of times we get down on ourselves. Do you find oh, exactly. that, that, that people seem to, you know, get really down on themselves when it, it didn't work out exactly as I planned? Mm -hmm. and, and there's a, an undercurrent, I think, that we can kind of read in the headlines. We all have heard of the great resignation, the great reshuffle. Uh, part of that seems to be that people have left their jobs, but they're not going back into the workforce like people expected. Uh -huh. uh, now, some of that is people my age and older who just decided to go ahead and retire, but there's indications that there are more and more people who are starting their own businesses. So this can be a great time for that. Yeah, yeah. All right. But we have to have skills. Exactly. We need skills. And I think uh, we've got something we're going to be talking about here in a minute or two about those skills. So speaking of those entrepreneurs that are have left uh, maybe corporate or large industries and uh, those of us who have already jumped into that happy boat of entrepreneurship, what can we do right now? What can we do to really make a difference in our businesses now? I mean, Jumping into 2022, holy tamale, 2022, Don, what can we do? Well, one of the things, uh, it kind of fits in with what I was saying a little while ago about end of semester. I've got a little downtime here. This is a great time to be taking some LinkedIn courses or courses in other places to ramp up those skills where you may need some refreshing in your own wheelhouse or to pick up those skills that you know you're going to need to be independent. Uh, I think there are a lot of people who've been working corporate that they know how to do what they do, but they may not know how to keep books. They may not know how to promote. 
Uh, I'm, I'm kind of in that boat in a way. I have been a professional speaker for over 30 years, but most of that time has been in a, um, a salaried position. So my skills for speaking may be up there. Uh, there's always room for growth. I'm not saying I'm at the pinnacle by any means, but I'm aware that my weakness is in marketing, for lack of a better term. I just haven't had to do that. And now's a great time to learn that kind of thing. I think there's a lot of people, like you say, they're so good at what they do, but now what? Exactly. I, I mean, I think- one of the things that I, I try to help people with, um, I'll, I'll tell my clients, my students, I'm not interested in helping you look like you know what you're talking about when you don't. I want to help you look like you know what you're talking about when you do, because there are way too many people out there who know their stuff. Yeah. But if we don't get that message out there, then we don't help the people that we could help. Exactly. Exactly. Thank you so much for saying that. Um, Let's help the people who know what they're doing help others. And I think that's that is fantastic. And thank you, Don, for really having that be your focus uh, of your work and great work it is, I'll tell you. So, you know, this uh, virtual thing, being on camera, Zoom or all kinds of these other, so many other platforms nowadays. Uh, So why, you know, we used to call them soft skills. And like, like I said, in the beginning, uh, they are, they're not soft skills anymore. These are essential skills. So, but why do they matter now? I mean, why is it so important now? I just, um, so if they're not soft, I mean, do we really need to to care about all this? What what's the deal with the soft skill, essential skill? What's up? Well, and the so-called soft skills can be difficult to pick up if for no other reason than they're not quantifiable the way that the number of widgets that come off of the assembly line are. Yeah. But I, I think the the thing that makes it so essential now, and really it's always been the case, as the things that we buy become more and more commoditized. And by that, I simply mean we could get whatever it is in any number of places. Um, We we buy from people, and I know we've all heard this, we buy from people that we know, like, and trust. We're learning to take that deeper. You know, that that can be just a surface level sort of thing. Um, I'm thinking right now, just for an example, um, I mentioned my daughter a little while ago. As you can imagine, we deal with a lot of medical folks, and one of those areas is Pharmacy. Now, pharmacies, you know, they're on every street corner. Uh, They're the big chains. We have been with the same pharmacy now for over 20 years, even though we could probably get better prices on some things other places, because these folks have always shown an interest in us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When I walk in, they have to still ask for date of birth because they have to. Yeah. But they know who it's for, and they, they know my daughter's background. They know their challenges. Um, there's been a couple of times where the insurance stuff, you know, got all messed up. And because we've had some experience with other pharmacies, we would go there and they would say, well, the insurance won't cover this. Our main pharmacy, they get on the phone. They go to bat for us. They find ways to work it within the system. They're yeah. following the law. Well, yeah. But they're finding the way. Yes. We will stay with those people no matter what. Oh, yeah. No, without a doubt. And, and it's, uh, you know, like we can, we can go to the big box stores for a sack of socks. Mm-hmm. But I want to go someplace where uh, they know me. They're, they'll take the time to ask me questions when I want to buy that that one thing that really matters, you know? And I think that's what you're talking about is this pharmacy, they care about you. They want to do the best for you. And so when we think about our businesses, what we do, um, I think we need to be that company that people know, like, and trust. I think that's that's key. Um, And I know that there have been people out there who have signed up for coaching and signed up for business lessons of some kind or another techniques and skills. And they've, they've been disappointed. Yeah. So let us be the ones that 
over help them overcome that and uh, yeah, see yeah. where there's there's really good stuff out there. Um, and Don, I know that's that's one reason why we have Don here today is because he is this ethical, hardworking for you kind of guy. So uh, yay, Don, I love you. Um, uh, so the you, feeling you know, is mutual. Can you give us two tips? Two I tips. Can. can you share two tips where we can build a deeper connection? Um, with those that we want to serve, two tips. You got two? I know you got, got more. But... You got, got more than that, but at least two here. One of them is a, a bumper sticker kind of reminder of what we've been talking about. That is connection before content. Uh -huh. Now, it doesn't mean the content doesn't matter. You got to know your stuff. Yeah. It's what the philosophers might call necessary, but not sufficient. So first, you have to know your stuff. The content matters. But until you make the connection, the content won't make an impact. Okay. So put connection before content, not in place of. But as you're thinking about working with your clients, with your customers, the connection is, it's not just a waste of time. It's not just small talk. Now, as an introvert, I'll tell you, small talk is more difficult for me. And I have learned to do it because... It's not a waste. It's how we decide if the person we're talking with is trustworthy. Mm -hmm. So number one, connection before content. Number two, remember that people don't make decisions based on logic. They make decisions based on emotion. They justify decisions based on logic. Mm. Now, that means in practice, you need both. You've got to be able to justify the decision. Again, an example, my uh, son, uh, technically my stepson, and the reason that matters is that he inherited some money from his dad when his dad died some years back. He actually had enough cash to be able to buy his dream car. He has always loved Corvettes. So the emotion was there, the want to was there, but he started doing some research on how much it was going to cost to maintain that thing, how much the insurance would be for a young man at the time. He couldn't justify the decision, and so he didn't buy it. But the want to was there. Yeah. On the other hand, I don't think anybody ever buys a car just based on the annual percentage rate or how many miles per gallon it gets. Okay? So yeah. you got to have both. But as business people, we can get so tied up in uh, – I guess this is like the old thing we hear sometimes about uh, don't sell features, sell benefits. Yep. People yep. don't buy drills. They buy holes. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So th this comes into it. You know, it's, it's people make decisions based on emotion, justify decisions based on logic. You need to have both. You have to have that. So glad you're here. Here's who I am kind of thing. Is that what we're talking about? Kind of like, um, uh, not necessarily my qualifications to talk to you, but, mm -hmm. you know, I, I don't want you why you? disappearing yeah why, why, why do i it, it's sort of like that uh, connection before content piece in a way here's another way to think about it businesses for years have brought in speakers uh, because of the pandemic we haven't been doing quite so much traveling that's starting to ramp up again i think there's going to be more and more of the kind of thing we're doing right here yeah and and but still when businesses invest in something like that, they're not going to spend the money unless they're getting more return than what it costs them. Yeah. If it was just about the information, we'd send an email. Okay. Now think about the expense that's involved. It's not just the speaker's fee. Yeah. It's the cost of the food. It's the cost of travel. Um, one of the things that is going to be true even in this venue the biggest single expense usually is the combined hourly cost, not necessarily the wage, but the cost. You know, if you're making $25 an hour, you're probably costing the company $50 an hour because of benefits and all of that other sort of thing. Yeah. Biggest single expense is the combined hourly cost of all of those individuals who are sitting listening to a speaker instead of whatever else they would be doing. Yeah. If yeah. it was just about the information, we just send an email. And so the most important factor in that communication is you, you, the speaker, you, the business uh, person, 
what are you bringing to it that they won't get just by reading a, a web page or a handout or you know right. just, just pure information right right and so so that meeting i went to had lots of connection yay but there was zero content mm -hmm. so we have to have a great combination uh, is what we're, that's what I'm hearing. You got to have a combination. Exactly. The, the, the content, yippee, send an email if that's all you're looking for. Do mm -hmm. this, blah, blah, blah. But it's that when you have a dynamic speaker who's explaining it and making it interesting and has knowledge and people want to hear them, psh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, if later all they can remember is they had good, warm, fuzzy feelings, mm -hmm. waste of time also. So that's yes. why we say you got to have both. Got to have yeah. both. Yeah, I like that though. When you think of it in that in that manner, because um, I do think a lot of times you get into that situation where you're just being blasted with information, and you you're not really, you know, ready for it. Or you know, you got to be ready. You, you come in the room, you know, you're going to a meeting. But I think it's important to make the people feel. Uh, you know, comfortable and, and um, welcome. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, and, and here's a third tip. Remember that out loud is not great for detail. Out loud is great for context, mm -hmm. framework, motivation. Uh, if I can use that word, that is making people yeah. want to get the detail. And then you have to give them solid detail if they want it in a handout, in a book, in a website. Yeah. So this is, again, it's not an either or, it's a both and. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I think handouts, um, and like you said, you know, and I've been to meetings before where it's death by PowerPoint, yeah. you know, and the, the person Horrible. is just reading the PowerPoint. Don't read the PowerPoint to me. Tell me the good juicy stuff and then give me the PowerPoint so I can go home and go, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, because I can read. I, I can read. I don't need you to stand there and read it to me. There's a whole area of study. I'm not going to get academic here, but there's a whole area of study that's called cognitive load theory. And it basically says we have limited short-term memory. Okay. If I give you um, my uh, phone number, business phone number, 2351597, you can say that back to me, no problem, I'm sure. And, and, you know, that's just seven digits. Didn't get yeah. the area code in there because we try to keep it at seven digits. Right. Okay. If, if I throw another one out there, 268-9307-235-1597, you probably dump all of it. Yeah. You don't just retain the last seven or the first seven. Okay. Right. Right. When we overload listeners, mm. they dump all of it. Oh, so this okay. is where the insight of when you're speaking, focus on one thing support that one thing in depth don't try to cover it all it's going to make more of an impact in fact here's my short way of saying this speaking is not about getting the words right it's about giving the words impact <gasps> Ooh, i think that needs to be cross-stitched on a pillow someplace that is really good yeah 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 and i think that's our point of being um uh speakers Mm -hmm. For those of us who are speaking, going out there and speaking, uh, we need to make an impact. That's yeah. that's the point. Not oh, and you said don't overload uh, with mm -hmm. details. I, I think that's such a great way of putting it. Thank you, Don. Ah, I'm so happy you're here today. Um, okay, so <laughs> another question for you. Um, what do you think about mm, platforms like Zoom going forward? I mean, is this is this where we're going? Uh, I mean, are there other things we can do? Uh, how do we make, I'm going to toss this in, how do we make Zoom more exciting, more interesting, more connecting? Well, one of the ways we can do that is what you're doing here right now. Instead of just having a talking head, we've got people having a conversation. You know, one, one of the long running formats on television that has been engaging is somebody like Oprah or Ellen or someone sitting and having a conversation with someone and we get to listen in. Yeah. They make it feel like we're part of it. And I'll bet your listeners right now, the folks who are on live, the folks who might be watching the recording, they know it's a recording. Yeah. But because we're interacting, you know, you and I have both heard each other speaking in 
the traditional platform kind of thing. Yeah. And so we know when you start speaking, you know, it, it can, it feels like a presentation. And I, I really try to push people that I train on effective speaking to do the conversational tone, even when it's just you and a camera, yeah. but it's so much easier when you've got like you and me here having this conversation. That's yeah, one thing you can do. And that's pretty low tech. Yeah. You know, you, you don't have to master a lot of tech for that. Um, multiple other things that you can do, but we've got to get past that idea that, oh, Zoom is not as good. And of course, we're talking Zoom as a generic almost. You know, right, there, there's right. lots of other platforms out there. Right. But just the, you got to have that connection. And you can do that. I mean, you can do it in this format without yeah. You do have to think about it. If you just do the thing that you do in front of a live audience, it's not going to work as well. Yeah. Uh, at, at the risk of me talking too much right now, it's sort of like when television came along, the first TV newscasters were radio announcers who were reading to a camera. It yeah. didn't really take advantage of the medium. Right, right. And Good so point. it took them a while to figure out how to really take advantage of that visual medium. We've got to do that same thing with Zoom and its cousins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I think um, I, I, uh, I saw a presentation last evening. Fabulous, fabulous young lady. Passion, uh, experience. This, her story just, I mean, okay, I admit I had a little tear in my eye. I'm just saying. and. And she had she had steps to take. I mean, she had the whole thing. And I had seen her earlier in the year and the connection she made because we get used to, we want to see everybody, you know, hello, 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 hello. We want to see the Brady Bunch boxes out here. Uh, for those who don't know who the Brady Bunches are, you're too young and just hang in there and listen to listen up. Look it uh, up but, on Google. <laughs> yeah, yeah, look it up on Google. But um, and for her presentation last night, she made such a connection, you know. And I think um, you know, when you go from being a, a speaker live in front of a whole bunch of people in a room, you know, you're used to, you know, scanning the room, you're used to having eye contact everywhere and now uh do you find that that people are having a really hard time talking to that little light up there oh yeah yeah in fact i, I think i was in the same presentation you're talking about and, and she did such a great job of moving in and, and uh, oh, making yeah. use of i'm saying eye contact i know we all hate these air quote things here okay <laughs> but still want to be sure i know it's not real eye contact but it feels that way when, yeah. when you're on stage, you look at your audience for two reasons. One, you want to know what they're doing, how they're responding. Yeah. And you also want to give them the feeling of connection with you. Both of those things happen at the same time on a live stage. Yeah. But here in this medium, you know, I'm looking at the camera right now. I think that makes it feel like, Dana, to you that I'm looking at you. It makes the, the listeners, the viewers feel like it. But I can't see how you're responding. I, I have to look down, everyone. There you are. Yeah, you see. It does take more conscious effort. But if yes. you can include the camera about 70% of the time. Yeah. If you're just looking at the camera 100% of the time, if you were doing that to an audience member in a live audience, it would get kind of creepy. You know, ah. so it's okay to look away. Yeah. But you don't want to just be focused on the screen. And, right. And, that's a connection thing. Right, right. Yeah. And, I, and I think that, and that takes practice. You know, yeah. there's lots of little tricks, air quotes again, there's lots of yeah. little tricks that we can use to remind us to look at the little light, but we have to get used to looking at the little light. And then, uh, you know, like when I give a presentation on Zoom, I ask, I, I try to ask a lot of questions, keep the audience, you know, interactive and, and engaged with what we're doing. So, you know, if I say, how many of you have ever, you know, uh, jumped rope, let's just use that, you know, I, you know, like, I want to see people raising their hands, you know, I, mm -hmm. I can't do that if I'm looking here. So it's a combination and uh, so good that you said that. It's, we, we just need to embrace this because this isn't going away, is it, Don? Absolutely. Uh, and I'm, 
Uh, I'm persuaded, again, it's one of those, it's not an either or, it's a both and. It's going to be here going forward if for no other reason than businesses, big businesses, have found that they don't have to invest in real estate like they did. Right. So we're going to be using this, but we're also going to be doing in person because we want to have the the hallway chats, the casual conversations. Yes. Both are both going to be there. But, you know, there are places in both. There are things you can do live that you can't do here. Mm -hmm. There are things you can do here that you can't do live. Now, we're on Zoom right now. Um, We don't want to leave out the folks who might be on Facebook uh, live or or the recordings later. But if you're doing something on Zoom, making use of what I call delayed chat. Yes, you love that. And I found I out that. from you. Yeah. yeah. So uh, explain delayed chat. Explain it. We're, we're going to have to wrap this up, Don, but de- explain delayed chat because it is magic. And, and we'll do this quickly. Everybody knows about the chat in Zoom. And so if you ask for response in the first place, you can get a whole lot more response that way than you usually can from a live audience. But you'll get even more if you tell people, okay, I'm going to give you a question. I want you to type your answer in the chat, but don't hit the enter key yet. Okay, just get your answer in there and give people, you know, you have a little bit of filler, a little talking while they type. And then, you know, after 30 seconds or so, you say, okay, go ahead and hit the enter key. And you'll get all kinds of input and it's all original because they haven't been uh, tainted, for lack of a better term. Here we are with the air quotes again. They haven't... uh, you know, they haven't been prejudiced because of what they saw somebody else type. Yes, yes, yes. Because a lot of times you're kind of going, well, it could be this or this. Mm-hmm. Oh, they just put that up. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. It, it, so, yeah, you're right. You get you get tainted. I love that word uh, because of it. So, whoa, good point. Delayed chat. Everybody out there, when you're on a Zoom meeting and you want to interact with your audience, try that out. It does work and it's really a great a great way to connect with the audience so great 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 information so i know what happens what typically happens with a live audience if you ask a question people will sit there and wait for somebody else to answer first Mm -hmm. and then when somebody else answers everybody just goes with it like eight-year-olds playing soccer chasing the ball you know that's bumblebee soccer. Yes, that's bumblebee okay, yeah. soccer. I love that. <laughs> yeah, I know. And, and that's that's very true. That's very true. Rarely do you get a lot of different answers live. It's mm-hmm. usually like, oh, yeah, that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what they said. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, good stuff. So, Don, you have six critical. Let me get that. I want to I'm going to read this, guys and gals. Six critical keys to communication confidence. And there's a link, and I'm going to be putting it in here, um, a link that they can just zip over there and get that for free. That would be wonderful. So six keys. And um, did you talk about any of those keys here during today's uh, talk? We've talked around some of them. You know, the, the, the thing about connection before content, for example. Yeah, yeah. So we have six keys, six six keys, because I don't have six on this hand. So we have six keys (laughs) uh, of to communication and confidence. So I'll put that link down here so you can get that right away. Go, jump on there, get those. Don, thank you so much. And we are going to be sharing your information. So if anyone wants to uh, find Don King, boink. Uh, so Don King is at Don with two N's. The first N is silent, donking.com. And or you can email him at Don at DonKing.com and ask him some questions. And if you if you want to email him right now and say, where's that link? I want it right now. He'll send it off to you. No problem. But um, I'll be putting it into to the uh, content here so that you can get these six critical keys to communication confidence. So let's do that. Super fun. Don, thank you so much for coming. This has been great information. I really appreciate it. And for those of you who don't know who I am, I am Dana Morgan Barnes. I am Coach Dana Inspires, and I coach women entrepreneurs, and I help them find their value. Women out there, you know who you are. We never, ever think we're worth what we're worth. It is so hard, but we are worth a lot. You're worth a lot. So let's find that out. Let's find your perfect client. And get out there and change the world one person at a time, because I know we can do it. So, Don, thank you so much for being here. 
and um, just have a great 2022 that's coming up. Holy tamale, it's quick like a bunny. Absolutely. Thank you, Dana. It's been great to be here. It's been a lot of fun, and I really love the work you're doing. Uh, the uh, only you. reason to speak is to change the world, even if just a little bit, and you're doing it. Well, thank you so much, and I've heard you speak too, Don. So, hey, talk to Don about speaking to your uh, company. Yep, yep, good stuff. Okay, everybody, this is it. We'll talk to you later. See you next Tuesday on Business Inspiration. Bye.